All right, thank you everyone very much for, for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started because we don't want to keep y'all waiting. Uh, but, you know, we've had a lot more people sign up, so hopefully we'll have a few more stragglers coming in. Um, but we don't want to keep you because you certainly showed up on time, and we appreciate you doing so and, and uh, being here and being ready. So thank you very much. Um, are we already rolling? Or? Yeah. Rolling. Okay. Um, so... Just to let you know, we appreciate you coming tonight. Um, we've got a, a presentation we, that we'd like to, to share with you. We think it's very um, beneficial to um, you as our members, and so that's what we want to. Um, whether you're aware of it or not, that uh, April is National Financial Literacy Month, and so we really take the time to, to um, try and help our members. One of the core functions of a credit union as a nonprofit organization is to provide financial literacy and financial education to um, our members. So that's one of the core functions we do on a daily basis, and then we have our, our board that, that instructs us, you know, that we need to um, do these on a, an educational basis as a group setting and, and functions such as this. And we've done this presentation in classrooms, we've done this presentation at uh, work or organizations, we've, we've done it at a, a number of different places where we've been um, requested to do it. So, you know, if you get through to the end and you say, hey, you know, this was great for somebody I know or a group of people I know, then by all means, um, let, get with us and we'll be happy to, to share that with them. Uh, I want to thank, we've got one of our board members here tonight, Linda Harris is here, and uh, so I thank her for, um, for, for being here tonight and for um, supporting us in this, in this endeavor. Um, but, you know, feel free as, you, as we're going through this, any questions. Again, this is for you. This is to help you. This is to, to help you to understand credit scores, understand your credit report, understand things that can improve your credit score and things that hurt it. Um, so if you have any questions, now's the time to ask, and I promise not to hurt you. You know, if you ask a question, you <laughs> no, we'll, we'll be happy to welcome any questions that you have. And then, um, if you're if you're like me, you don't mind raising your hand in a in a setting like this and asking a question. But some people, like my wife, might she would you know it take the jaws of life to get her hand up in a setting like this. So feel free to save that question, and we're going to have individuals that can speak with you at, at the end, and you can ask them individually what that question is. And, um, and so you don't have to feel, feel like you have to ask that now, and you, or you'll miss your opportunity. But we want to make it as, as, as good for you as possible. If the question, if you need to answer, ask it now, feel free to. Um, with, with that, we will go ahead and get started. Um, again, tonight we're just basically touching on two major factors, and that first is understanding your credit report. What, what makes up a credit report? What is a credit report? And then um, and what has become a very important factor in our lives, understanding your credit score. And those are two totally separate things, credit reports and credit scores. You can see one without, you can see the credit report without seeing the credit score, and you can see the score without seeing the credit report. And so really kind of having an understanding of how those two work together and function together is, is, is important. So we'll start with that. We'll start with our first slide. And also, this is our first venture into um, Facebook Live. So that's why you see this camera sitting up here in Facebook world. Thank you for joining us. I know you could be um, looking at memes or whatever else you on Facebook, so we appreciate you joining us here. I think my mom might be tuning in, so hi, Mom. Uh, <laughs> um, and sorry I couldn't make it for supper tonight. Uh, but anyhow, what is your credit score? Um, a credit score is basically it's just a number. It's a number that summarizes your credit risk based on a snapshot of your credit at any particular point in time. Your credit score is going to be a number that's going to change over time. Um, and and the, the way I like to think about it is as a snapshot. Think of it like a, like a picture. This is what your, your picture looks like right now. But as we all know, when we look at pictures of us, say, 5, 10, 15 years ago, things change. And, and I look a lot different than I did 10, 15 years ago. And some, sometimes I look at an old picture of me and I'll think, wow, you know, I, I was you know, 50 pounds lighter. I looked, you know, all right, that was, that's pretty good. And other times I look at a picture of me and I'll think, why was I wearing that, or what in, the world, what in the world was I thinking with that haircut, or whatever, you know, and you, you all do that with yourselves. Well, that's a credit score. It's going to, it can change over time, and so, you know, don't get frustrated by where you are at this point in time, and don't get, um, think that, oh, there's no way to turn around. It's, it, that picture is going to change over time, just like pictures of us change over time. Um, a credit score it helps lenders basically to be able to evaluate your credit report and to estimate your level of future risk. It's, it, the credit scoring models were designed specifically for lenders. 
Um, and so it helps to, to be able to, to um, standardize and be able to, to, um, to group different features together. Credit scores were developed by, developed by the Fair Isaac Corporation. And so you'll often hear the term FICO, and it's F-I-C-O, and that stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. And so when you hear a, a FICO score or something like that, and you think that's just the company that developed it, Fair Isaac Corporation. And he was the guy that, the Isaac, Fair Isaac, he um, basically came up with all the algorithms that kind of put those credit scoring models into place. Um, credit scores are often referred to as FICO scores, as we talked about, and credit scores range from 300 to 800, 850. Uh, basically speaking, the higher the credit score is, the lower the credit risk is. The lower the credit score is, the higher the credit risk is. And that's all that those numbers are saying um, and, uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Next slide, if you would, please. This just gives you a, bit, a general thing on credit scores. Um, a chart that kind of breaks down the percentages and we'll go through each one of these uh, how much this makes up of your credit score and the value and the importance of each one of these different factors uh, or excuse me this is the just telling you the different scoring ranges so the excellent would be between 800 and 850 um, very good 750 to 799 good 700 to 749 fair 650 to 699 obviously so you can see um, the, the different scoring ranges so obviously the higher the score again the better, the better the credit risk, the lower the score, then the more credit risk that's going to be involved. Next slide, please. Um, why is your credit score important to you? There's a number of reasons why. One, first and foremost, companies can use your credit score and will use your credit score to determine if they're going to grant a particular service or some type of credit. Um, I'm proud to say that Members First, we don't, we don't set scoring limits and we don't base decision, make credit decisions based on credit scores. We do use credit scores and we evaluate them in the process, but there are many lenders that say, okay, you have to have this minimum credit score to get this product with us, or you have to have at least this credit score to get this product with us. And you find that uh, certainly with the larger corporations, you know, that, um, that don't have a personal type of relationship and, and uh, uh, where you have more but local lenders, we're still, you know, old school in that we, we evaluate on an individual basis and not just use a number to say, yeah, you can get a, a product, or no, you can't get a product. Um, but certainly, there are many lenders, and you see that with the larger corporations that um, that that will use that to determine uh, with whether or not they can grant credit. And then, obviously, um, in addition to whether or not they're going to grant credit, the the credit scores are used to determine what interest rate and or fees that are going to be charged on a product. So whether it's a credit card, an auto loan, you know, any any type of financial service or product. There's going to be um, uh, different fees or interest rates associated with that, and credit scores will often drive that that scoring model or that that, that um, fee model. Um, and companies will use credit scores to reevaluate services. So I mean, I think we um, you know we ha you have a credit card established with a with a lender, and they have a certain limit established for you. They'll often uh, reestablish or reassess that credit over time. So, say you've had a credit card for five years with somebody, and then you get a letter in the mail, and sometimes it might say, "Hey, we you, you had a a thousand dollar credit limit. You done so good with that. We're going to raise your credit limit to, you know, two thousand dollars or whatever the case may be." Then that's there. They've reassessed your credit, and they've probably most likely pulled a new credit report and and said, "Hey, now you qualify for this." And then there's other instances where a credit card company can say, "Hey, your limit was a thousand dollars." And based on your other debt level or based on the other payment history, we're going to decrease that from 1000 to 500 or something. So they, the companies will reassess where you are based on, on, on the credit score. So these are the reasons why it's important to you. It, it's, a, it's a big factor on how much, whether or not you can obtain credit and financial services, and then also how much that financial service or that, um, that account is going to cost you. Next, please. Um, who uses credit scores? Um, so many companies now use credit scores. Uh, it's more than just you know banks that you would automatically think of. But mortgage lenders, obviously, when if you go to, to, to buy a house or refinance a house, mortgage lenders are going to um, uh, going to be assessing credit scores. Uh, consumer lenders uh, for autos, boats, uh, any type of uh, personal loans. And credit card companies, um, insurance companies, so uh, buying certain types of insurance can cost you more or less based on a credit score. Um, utility companies, landlords, a number of companies now and a number of different um, um, uh, people will use credit scores in, making determ in determining whether or not you can get that product and then also how much it's gonna cost you. Next, please. 
Um, so before we talk about what's in your credit report, I want to talk about some things that aren't in your credit report. And these are things that a lot of people over the years, we've, we've, uh, you know, we deal with a lot of people on an individual basis and we kind of educate people on a one-on-one -on -one basis with credit scoring models. And these are some things that are just common misunderstanding that things that people assume are in their credit report, but are definitely not. Um, credit scores contain information from your credit report, but they do not consider any of the following. This, none of this other information, so your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, and or marital status, none of that is in your credit report at all. So when somebody's just looking at your credit report, they, they, they know none of that information. Your age is not in your, in your credit report, and that's a pretty common misconception. Um, salary, occupation, title, employment, where you live, any information that is not found in your credit report is not um, part of your credit score. And so they don't factor any of those, those, um, those, those things into your score. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's based on standardized information in your credit file. And that's why they're able to use these algorithms to determine these credit scores. Next, please. Uh, so what, we found out what's not in your credit report or what is in your credit report. Um, credit reports uh, can vary b b based on the different reporting agencies, so it, credit reports might look different from one vendor to another, but the information is pretty much the same. Uh, identifying information such as your name, address, date of birth, trade lines. Um, trade lines are basically any creditors that you have or any um, uh, like collect collectors or anything. So lending, uh, lenders reporting account information on, from your credit report, Those are, that's what a trade line is. Yes, ma'am. The date, of, the date of birth is in, on your credit report, but it's not factored into your credit score. That's the clarification there. So in your credit report, there will be a date of birth provided. Um, that's to help standardize making sure that we're getting the right person that you're requesting it on. Because you could have two Tom Painters. Um, I'm a Tom Painter Jr. My dad's a Tom Painter Sr. There could be more than one Tom Painter. If I apply as Tom Painter, then you, know, you want to be able to make sure you got the right Tom Painter. And so date of birth is used to make sure we've got the right person. You use the date of birth, uh, social security number, and the name to, to cross-reference to make sure that this is the right person. But it's not factored into your score. Great question. Okay, another, you said where you live is not, but then they ask for your address. It's, it's, so a, it's the same thing. The address is part of your credit score, or it's part of your credit report, but not part of your credit score. Okay. So it's not factored into your credit scoring model, but, it's fact, but it is part of your credit report. So that's why, again, there's, there's two major kind of functions. There's a credit report and then a credit score. And so the credit score is, is basically what's going in to make up that, that one number. And then the credit report, there's some other information that's not, um, that's not in the, factored into the credit score. Very good question. Next, please. Uh, additional information in your credit report, you'll find um, that there are credit inquiries, so places where you have requested credit. And then sometimes there are inquiries where, uh, where you haven't requested any credit, and that might be where someone is soliciting the, the bureaus for a particular um, a person that meets particular characteristics. They might get, go to the credit bureaus and say, hey, I would like to market my product, whether it be a credit card or an auto loan or whatever, I would like to market my product to someone that, that, um, that has this particular score um, or higher has these particular attributes on their credit score. They have to have at least you know five trade lines over, over time, um, have to have certain payment history on it. So there can be voluntary and involuntary um, inquiries on your, voluntary be where you went and actually requested credit from somebody, involuntary is where somebody came and requested credit on you. And so the, vol the voluntary, it, um, it shows as you requesting it. That's where um, if you came to members first and said, hey, I wanna get a loan, then that's a voluntary one. But if you, um, but if members first went to the credit bureau and said, "Hey, I would like to um, lend to people to meet these characteristics," and we send you an offer, that's involuntary and it doesn't factor against you. Um, also, public record and collection items. Public records are like bankruptcies or um, uh, uh, liens, uh, tax liens, things of that nature that that are publicly recorded. And those factors are your credit report as well, and show up on the credit report. Um, what does my credit score include? <clears throat> These are the primary factors of, of, that go into a credit score. Um, the first, and you'll see the largest, is your payment history. Um, payment history, amounts owed, uh, length of credit history, new credit, and types of credit used. The next slide will actually go on and show you kind of a, a, a more detailed breakdown. 
Um, credit score takes in consideration all of these categories and not, or not just one or two. So it's not just your, your, your um, and we're going to go through each one of these individually so you'll see um, a better breakdown of which, each one of these factors. But the credit score, it, it, com it combines all of these factors for one credit score. It doesn't just, you just use credit history or just use the length of history. So it's, just, it's more than just one thing that goes into your credit score. Um, the importance of each category depends on the overall information in your credit report. Um, no one factor is going to be all inclusive, and then, um, and then the other four factors are thrown to the side, excusing all, all four of those. Um, and then your score, it, it contains both positive and negative information. You know, over the years we've heard people say, oh, it only includes, you know, my, the bad stuff. Well, no, it includes any information, your credit information, budget, whether it's good or bad. You first factor and the, the largest factor is your payment history. It's over one-third of your credit score. It's 35% of your credit score. Payment history um, basically includes any, any information on uh, trade lines that you have or accounts that you have established somewhere and how you paid on them. You know, it'll, it'll, um, will actually, the credit report will actually show a 24-month history for the most recent 24 months. And payment history, the, the, the most current information is going to weigh heavy, the weigh the heaviest. So, um, the longer an account has been current, the better it's going to, it's going to um, affect your credit score. Uh, if there was delinquency on an account, um, then the further you get away from that, the less it's going to factor into your score. Um, so, you know, time helps if there, if, uh, when there's delinquency. Um, if it, delinquency was last month, it's, it's, it's a heavier factor into, into a credit score. If delinquency was 36 months ago, it's a very small factor into that credit score. So it depends on when, and, um, when, when it, it happens. Um, but obviously that, that those trade lines include credit cards, installment loans, finance companies, mortgages, all sorts of things. And again, public records, like we discussed about liens, um, uh, judgments, bankruptcies, things like that are public information. And those, those actually um, are part of your credit score as well. And they factor into the payment history portion of your credit score. And then collection items. Collection items are generally like medical type collections. Um, uh, you went to a doctor and, um, and uh, there's a, a, a bill out there or something like that or, or to a hospital and uh, that, those go, generally go to a collector. Um, there are some non-medical collections but the, the generally what you see is, is medical type stuff. Next please. Um, in, also included in your payment history is how long accounts have been past due. So if an account was past due, if you got say 36 months of payment history on an account but it was only past due one month, it's not going to factor that much into it, especially if that was 24 months ago. Um, but you know, if, if you have 36 months on an account and all 36 months have been past due and, and delinquent each month, then that's going to factor more heavily into your credit score. So how long it's, it, it has been past due, um, and then other items such as like the total amount past due for your delinquent accounts. If you have one delinquent account, it's not going to factor as much as you have 10 delinquent accounts. You know, it obviously it weighs that uh, as a heavier item. And then how many past due accounts are on the file and how many accounts are paid as agreed. So again, you know, one, and where that comes in, that's how many accounts are paid as agreed. Say um, you have a borrower that has one credit account and, it's, and it goes delinquent. That's gonna factor pretty heavily into that person's credit score because that's the only account that they have, the only trade line that they have to base it on. Versus someone that's had 40 trade lines over, over a long period of time and they have one, one trade line that's delinquent, it's not gonna factor nearly as much into that credit score because it's just that one trade line out of 40 versus one out of one that was, that was delinquent. How just do we know what accounts we have? Um, you can actually obtain a free copy of your credit report and we'll tell you how to do that at the end and that'll list any trade lines that are on your, the, any accounts that you have and trade Other lines. Other credit cards? Credit cards, um, loans that you've had in the past, and it doesn't have to be an active uh, account. It could be one that was closed out, but it'll still report on your credit report for ten, um, ten years. Actually, well, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's seven years from date of last activity. Ten years on a, um, a bankruptcy, it'll be, it will be on your credit report. But seven years from date of last activity. So, say you closed out a credit card um, today, then and, and but it'll still report on your credit credit report for seven years from now. Um, so it'll still factor in your credit score. And again, that can be positive or negative. So if you paid perfect on that and it's closed out, great, it's, you know, it's not hurting you in any way. Um, you know, it, uh, but it's gonna remain on your credit report for that seven years from that date of last activity. Great question. Next, please. The next largest factor is the amount you owe. 
Um, the, again, 35% based on your payment history, the amount you owe is 30%. Those two factors together are two thirds of your credit score. So if you can get these two factors right, you've got, and, and, you, and you really um, hammer down on these, then you, you've got your credit score in a nutshell. So again, the total of those is 65% of your credit score. This is, the amount owed is 30%. Um, it's, we often refer to it as capacity. Basically what um, you're, you're looking at, the capacity, it's a big part, you know, being it's the second biggest factor in just, a, just shy of payment history, capacity is, is king in our opinion. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty big. It can, it can affect a credit score um, pretty substantially. You can see someone with perfect payment history, but if they're maxed out on a, on a lot of different accounts, and we'll explain that a little bit in, in the next slide, if they're maxed out on a lot of accounts, then it can, their credit score cannot be as strong even with perfect payment history. And so that's, that's sometimes confusing for people to understand. They think, oh, I've paid perfect. I've never missed a payment on anything. But if, there, if there's a lot of debt and it's, and it's maxed out uh, credit, then the scores are gonna, are, are gonna come down for that borrower because they're looking at, hey, this, this, they're, they're, they're tapped out. Their, their ability to borrow is, is limited. Um, so we'll go into that in the next slide, but um, it says a little bit more about it. Um, included in your amounts owed are your proportion of credit lines used. Great example, uh, just a basic example here to, to kind of tell you what, that, what we're talking about when we talk about capacity. Say you have a thousand dollar credit card balance and, that, and that, so a credit card is some type of revolving credit line. So you have a credit line that was established to say it's a thousand dollar limit and you've got a one thousand dollar limit and um, on, on just one credit card and you have a thousand dollar balance. Well, if you have a thousand dollar balance and a thousand dollar limit, you are 100% loaned out. You are at max capacity. Um, now, if you take that same thousand dollar balance, but you have a ten thousand dollar credit limit, then you are only 10% loaned out. That one same one thousand dollar balance will affect your score differently based on what the limit is. So, um, so if if you know if you have a credit card and if you only have one credit card and it's maxed out at the balance to the limit then that's actually hurting your credit score. It's pulling your credit score down versus if you have one or more or multiple credit cards with higher limits and your balances are, even though you have that same thousand dollars and you think, well, it's, it's the same thousand dollars, but the credit scoring models are looking at your capacity with your ability to, to, to borrow on that account. And um, the credit scoring models just don't like the fact that it's maxed out. So the more accounts that you have maxed out, the worse it's gonna pull down your credit score. And so that's why we talked about just a minute ago how some people with perfect payment history can have a less than perfect credit score and that's because of maxed out accounts. So they can have credit cards that, um, that are at or near their limits and if they have one, two, three, four, and sometimes we'll see eight, nine, 10 credit cards that are maxed out and it can really pull a person's score down because it's, again, it's almost a third of your credit score is, is, is based on capacity. Yes, ma'am. Higher limit in the long run is going to help your score. Um, the, the having a higher limit and a lower balance is going to help your credit score in the long run. However, um, applying for credit in the short run can affect your credit score because your most credit lenders are going to pull a credit report, and so there's going to be an inquiry, and so and there's going to and, and especially if you're establishing a new account, that can impact your credit score in the short run. But in the long run, the higher limit and a lower balance are going to help your credit score. Does that make sense? So for a month or two, and maybe a few months, having the fact that you have a brand new account on your credit report and you had an inquiry to, to apply for credit could affect your credit score a very, a very small amount. But then um, over the long run, having the higher limits are gonna help you because 30% of your credit report is based on capacity. Because you now have more capacity. Now you, you now have more capacity. And again, it's not based on necessarily the balance, but the balance in relation to the limit. Certainly, that's and that's that's the risk of your, the trade-off there is that is is um is and so again, you know we're educating you tonight on the the scores and how they work, but how you use the score and how you use your credit that's really ultimately your decision, you know so you know there are risks involved with having that credit line out there, 
Um, obviously, there's some protections that, as, there as well based on the, the, the type of transactions there are, you know, the, 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 the lenders have to provide. Um, but, but yeah, certainly there are, there are risks with that as well, there, whether it be from an outside source or from uncontrolled self. You know, we, we, we've all heard the stories of a person that, you know, oh, I've got it available, I'm going to you know, charge it or whatever, and, and you get it at the end of the month can't be my balance you know and so you know we've, we've all seen that situation I've experienced it personally you know so we um, we, we know that 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 feeling well um, but with the amounts owed, the proportion of credit lines used is the, is a big portion uh, proportion of installments loans still owed so if you borrowed you know twenty thousand dollars to uh, to buy a car and you owe nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars it's going to factor um, more heavily in, in or into your credit score than if you owed nineteen dollars left, you know, on, on the on the loan. So how much you still owe on it, and then total amounts you owe on all accounts, um, and then certain lack of certain types of credit um, can uh, credit balances can in, in, uh, affect your credit score and how many account balances that you have. Um, as far as the certain types of credit, the, the scoring models want to see a nice balance of credit. They want to see some, there's two major breakdown, two major sections of credit. There's revolving, which would be like a credit card or a credit line where you have a limit that's set and you can borrow up to that limit and then pay it down and borrow up to that limit, which would be like a credit card or a store credit card. Um, and then installment. An installment is where you borrow a particular amount of money, a set amount of money, for a set term, like an auto loan or a mortgage, that's installment. That's um, a mortgage you might buy for you buy a house and you pay for thirty years for it. That's that's installment. It's not you don't borrow you know to buy the house and then charge it back up the next month or whatever. It's just it's, it's set to pay out over time. And so not having one of those types of credit, not having any type of revolving or not having any installment history, is going to factor into your credit, credit scoring models. The scoring models like to see a nice balance. They want to see the fact that you can manage both your credit, the, the installment and the revolving. Next, please. Uh, length of credit history. That's the next biggest factor, 15% of your credit score based on your um, how long you've had accounts and how long they've been established. Accounts with longer credit, credit history would generally help to increase your score. That makes sense. You know, if you've had an account established for six months, it's, 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 not, it's not helping your credit score a lot. If you had an, a, an account established six years, it's definitely helping your credit score. If you've had that uh, account established for 20 years and great payment history on it, it's, it's a rock star in your, in your credit file. You know? So how long you had an account is, um, is, is very important in, in your credit report. Um, and the length of credit history includes how long accounts have been opened, how long specific types of accounts um, have been opened, and then how long it's been since you've used certain accounts. So, um, you know, we we'll all, you know, maybe get had an account at some point that we're no longer using. Again, it's on your credit file for the next seven years from when, from when the date of last activity, if you close it out. But, you know, that's what you I often encourage people, you know, just keep accounts on that credit file. If, you know, if it's not hurting you, just keep it out there just to, to have that limit available to keep your capacity up, and certainly if you're not getting any fees or if you're not getting any you know, annual fees or anything type of that, it's gonna help your capacity. And having that account established for a long period of time is gonna help your um, your length of credit history. Next please, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, new credit. This is where it goes back to the point where, you know, if I, if I, if I, um, if I take out a new account, more so than if I raise my credit line, um, uh, but if you take out a new account, that affects your credit as well. You know how much new credit you have, and, and, um, and how long that credit's been established. But um, research has shown that um, opening several accounts in a short period of time represents higher risk, especially for people who do not have a long established credit history. Now, if you've got um, you know 40 years of payment history in in, a, in, a, in your credit file, and and, um, and you go and open one credit account, it's not going to factor very much in your credit score. But if you're, you know, especially, it just especially affects young people. So if you've got someone that's, you know, 19, 20 years old and is trying to get established and they open three, four small credit cards at one time, it's going to be a big factor in their credit score because they don't have that history. They don't have the established payment history over time. So again, it's based on what other information is in your file in addition to the actual how many accounts. So opening one or two accounts for someone that has established history over a long period of time, really not a big factor. But establishing new accounts for someone with very limited history, it's a big factor. It becomes a, a, a weighty part of their credit score. Next, please. Um, new credit lines include how many recently opened accounts you have and the proportion of, uh, proportion of new accounts by account type. So if you have 
new accounts and they're all revolving, it's going to wait, um, it's such as credit cards, instead of any type of installment payment history, it's going to um, impact your credit score more negatively than if you have some installment history in there. Uh, number of recent credit inquiries. That's what we talked about earlier. You know, uh, a re, uh, you know, um, applying to get a credit line increase or to open a new credit card certainly can affect your uh, your credit score as well. And if you have a bunch of inquiries, then it certainly could affect your credit score. Um, how long it's been since you've opened a new account? How long since you your credit inquiries and whether or not you're you um, have a good recent credit history following past payment problems. Again, that goes into the factor of the, the most current information is weighted the most heavily. So, you know, if you've had payment history problems that were two, three, four years ago, that's not affecting your credit score as much as a, a delinquent account today is affecting your credit score. It's affecting you much more uh, in a much newer way. And certainly if that account is new and delinquent, it's gonna be a, 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 a very negative factor on your credit score. Next, please. Uh, the last one, types of credit used. This is where, again, we do, the, the credit scoring models break it down into installment, revolving, and how they affect your score differently. Approximately 10% of your credit score is based on the types of credit that you use. Um, the credit score will consider your mix of credit cards, retail accounts, installment loans, finance company accounts, and mortgage loans. So again, the scoring models are looking for a nice blend. They want some revolving, some installment. They want you know, to have the best score, you're going to have to have the the, um, the good payment history because that's 35% of your credit score. You're going to have to have them established for a, a reasonable period of time. Um, the longer, the better. And then you're going to have to have low, um, high capacity with low low uh, balances in relation to the to the limits. Next, please. Um, what kind of credit you have is important. Do you have both revolving and installment? Again, like we just talked about. And then the total number of accounts is also taken into consideration. And depending on your overall credit profile will affect each person's credit score differently. Um, again, the, and, and the types of credit, another thing that can, never, can negatively affect, affect your credit and impact your credit score is just the type of account that it is. Um, you know, finance companies will actually decrease your credit score. They, they, you know, having a finance company on there, it's factored into your credit scoring model can actually you know, hurt your credit score just for the fact that it's a finance company versus, say, a bank or a credit card lender or a credit union or you know some other type of financial institution. Just having the finance company itself can can actually affect your credit score. And, and, and you know, many times you go to a store and you try to do some type of, that's done through finance companies quite often. And so, um, unfortunately, that can be a, a negative factor on your credit score. Yes. No, they are not. Payday lenders are different, and actually, you will not see payday lenders on a credit report mm -hmm. generally. In fact, I, I, I almost never see a, a payday lender on there. There is a type of credit scoring that can be used for payday lenders, but it's a totally different, and it's not it's not nearly as regulated as as your credit credit scores and credit reports are. Great question, but no, they don't show up on your credit report. Payday lenders do not. Um, that's one of the the. The, the hooks for those is that you know they don't have to qualify based on the credit report or whatever they have their own qualifications aside from credit scoring and credit models traditional credit models well <laughs> there's some opinion and that's certainly uh, an opinion that's shared in the credit union uh, world but uh, yeah but um, they, they, they we think we do a very good job of trying to help people get out of those situations yeah Next, please. Um, again, how many? Uh, how do inquiries affect my credit score? This is a, a, a big one for people. Everyone says, "Oh, I don't want my credit pulled. I don't want my credit pulled." And, and, and understandably so, it does affect, it does impact your credit score. Uh, in, but inquiries usually only have a very small impact on your credit score. And I say usually that there's always the exception to the rule. If you have very little credit and no credit established, and you've got 20 inquiries on your credit report then it's gonna factor pretty big in your credit score. It's gonna say, whoa, this person has no credit established. Um, hold on, they're, now all of a sudden they're discovering how to apply for credit and, they, and, and they've got 20 inquiries all of a sudden. Then it's gonna factor pretty heavily, but that's usually the only instance where it's really gonna be a big factor on a credit score. Um, if you've had credit established, whether it be positive or negative, and you apply for more credit, it's, it's not gonna be a huge factor. It'll just be a, you know, a few points at the, uh, at the most for most people. Um, uh, Again, like I said, less than five points for most people. Higher for people with few credit accounts or short credit history. 
Some inquiries do not even factor on your credit score. Remember we talked about there are two different types of inquiries. There's an inquiry where I go and apply for credit somewhere. I want a credit card. I want a store card. I want an auto loan through the credit union. I want a, you know, a mortgage, that sort of thing. I've gone somewhere and applied for a particular product. That's an inquiry. It's called a hard inquiry and generally in, 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 um, is what we call it. And, and so um, that's where I went and applied for something um, or asked for a particular product. A uh, soft inquiry is where that lender goes to the bureau and to the credit bureaus and says, hey, I want people that, that, that meet these characteristics. They've got to have this minimum score. They've got to have these um, number of trade lines established over time. They've got to have um, these certain cr credit factors. If, so, if you didn't actually go and apply for it, then it's a soft inquiry, and it does not in factor into your credit score at all. So you don't have to worry about if you get those, you know, those credit card offers in the mail or you get some type of loan offer in the mail. You don't have to worry about the fact that, that – that they were inquiring about you, it's not impacting your credit score. The only type of inquiry that will impact your credit score is if you went somewhere and applied or if you called somewhere and applied or applied online. You actually requested a credit product. Um, next slide, please. Um, credit score formulas allow for rate shopping. Another thing that, that credit scoring models have gotten better about in the past few several years now um, is that in the good old days, you know, you, you might go to car city and, and to to buy a car and uh, the dealer might send out your um, information to multiple lenders and so it could go to you know all different types of auto lenders and 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 um, each one of those would pull a separate credit report on you and you would say oh, okay well I've got this this lender pulled this credit this printer and then um, the, the, the car auto dealer would say hey we got your credit through so-and-so um, but you have a number of inquiries on your credit report based on that, that one request. Um, the credit scoring models have gotten a lot better about identifying those, those multiple requests in a short period of time and counting them as one credit inquiry versus six, seven, and sometimes even you know, up to 10 in inquiries or something where you can see, um, uh, so if, if you've had, now again, if it's, it's similar types of inquiries in a short period of time, usually one or two weeks. Um, so if you went shopping at Car City and stopped at every dealership and they pulled, each one of them pulled your credit you know, two or three times and then, um, then you might have you know, eight, nine, ten inquiries out, out there. It's going to look at those. Those are all auto lenders. Those are all um, in, in a one week time period. It's going to factor those as one inquiry versus eight or ten. But now if you went to the Car City and then you went to the mall and, and, and looked at you know, uh, a lot of store retailers and tried to apply for a lot of store credit, then it's going to look at it as separate types of inquiries because it it's knows that those you know that um, that buckle is not providing you a car loan you know <laughs> um, so um, there's there's a number of different types of ways that I factor in but generally the similar types of inquiries in a short period of time is only going to count as one inquiry and that's just because most of us do some type of rate shopping now you know we we are like oh okay we're we're more sensitive to rates fees that sort of thing and so they know that people are shopping around for those. Next, please. Um, so what actions hurt your credit score? Obviously, 35% of your credit report is based on your payment history. So, you know, um, missing payments, behind on payments, things like that are, are going to impact your credit score. And they're going to impact it by about a third of your, of your um, total score. Um, credit cards that are at capacity or near capacity. And again, that's, you know, the balance in relation to the credit limit. So if your limit is... $1,000 and you owe $1,000, you are maxed out. That's, that, that's full capacity. And if you have several credit cards that are all maxed out, it's really impacting your credit score. Um, so again, the things you want to do are to, one, pay down those balances or get higher limits. <laughs> you, can go, you can go one of two ways. Um, you know, one thing that a lot of um, people will do, especially um, people that have, that have experienced the credit card problem before where you get to the end of the month and you say, wow, I didn't realize my balance was, was that high and, and I, I run up that balance and now I can't pay it off at the end of the month like I was intending and, and, it, and, and it continues to grow and you get it up at, at that, that limit. Um, then a lot of people, when they get out of that situation, they say, well, I'm never charging that up again. I'm gonna get rid of that credit card and I'm, I'm just gonna get, um, you know, close that account and shut it down. Well, unfortunately, what you've done there is you've reduced your capacity. If you close that account, you've reduced your capacity. So say, um, we'll, we'll take two credit cards as an example. We'll say you have two credit cards, um, each of them have a $1,000 limit, credit limit. 
um, and you say, well, you know, I only need one credit card. I don't need that second credit card. And so um, I'm just going to shut down that second credit limit for $1,000. Now you reduce your capacity to $1,000. So even if you only have a $500 balance on that, that credit card, it's halfway loaned out. You know? And so it's reduced your capacity. Instead of being 25% of your total limits, it's now 50% of your total limits. So, you know, one thing you want to be very careful is, you know, if you're, if you're really focused on score and driving your score up as high as you can, then you really don't want to reduce your capacity. You, don't, you know, it, certainly if an account is not costing you any fees or annual fees or things like that, leave the account open and, and, and let it help your capacity and, and help your, drive your credit score up. Uh, shopping excessively for credit um, over an undefined period of time. You know, again, if you do it in a short period of time, it's not hurting you. But if you just, you know, every time you go to a to to a store, hey, I'll, I'll just apply for a credit card, and then you go once a month, and then you try, then over a long period of time, that's going to that's going to impact your credit score. So what about the you know when you're checking out your payment? Don't you want to get out a credit card? Don't you want to get out a credit card? Correct. That's um, those are that, that you're applying for credit there, and so they have mm -hmm. the ability to be able to pull your credit report, and it's going to show as an inquiry. Um, again, if you're just doing it once and, you know, if you have, certainly if you have established payment history over a long period of time, you're just doing it once in a short period of time, or if you go to two stores in a real short period of time, then it's going to, you know, look at those inquiries as one. But if you just, I'm going to, you know, every time I go to a store, but I only go shopping once every six months, then it's going to, there are going to be separate inquiries and they're both, they're going to obviously affect your credit score at that point. Great question. Um, having more revolving loans in relation to installment loans. Again, credit reports that we see that have just um, revolving type of credit, they're not going to have as strong a score as someone that has both revolving, which are like credit lines, credit cards, and, and installment, where you have loans that over defined term or defined period of time, that is 60 months, uh, 15 years, whatever the, the case may be. Um, and then again, borrowing from finance companies, that can negatively impact your credit score. Um, tips for improving your okay. So we told you what hurts your credit score. How do you how do you improve it? One, make payments on time. Yeah, I mean, if if there was delinquency uh, in the past, making payments on time now is going to um, uh, improve that that credit score now. Um, again, the further you get away from that delinquency, so if the delinquency was one year, two years, two, the further you get away from that, the better it's going to be for your credit score. So, so Tom, yes. Okay. Going back to the store problem. Correct. Right. That's no, you don't have to. You still have the account whether you buy something or not. But so lower my it's actually increased your capacity if you're not using it. Um, so say you um, go to a store and, and, and they, they say, Hey, you want to qualify for a twenty and you get a twenty percent discount right here. Um, normally they'll want you to charge it right there on your account and you can pay it off right, you know, at the end of the month or whatever you plan to do. Um, but just because you paid it off doesn't mean that account goes away. It's, it's now an established account that you have with a credit line, whatever they approved you for, maybe 500000 whatever the whatever the credit limit is. And then you have that, that's part of your credit report now. And it's going to be on there seven years from the date you close it. So if you call them and close it immediately, it's still on your credit report for seven years. If you don't close it, then it's, it's an active account on your credit report and it's factored into your capacity. So it's looking at that limit and what your balance is in relation to that limit. So if you... Right? Put them in my drawer and I don't use them. Yeah, then they are on your credit report and they're, they're part of your capacity and they're, you know, if you're not using them and you have no balance, it's helping your credit score because it's part of that capacity. It's that part of that 30% that's factored into what your balances are in relation to your credit limit. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's helping your credit score. If you were to go and uh, if you were to go and close out all those credit lines, then that's going to negatively impact your credit score. Again, based on the other information in your credit report, it may or may not be a huge factor, but um, but it, closing out all those credit lines at one time would certainly impact your credit score in a negative way. Um, uh, so do not close credit cards because capacity will decrease. Again, if it's not costing you anything, if you're not getting some type of annual fee, if you're not getting having some type of um, uh, expense related to it, don't close the account. Leave it out there and it's helping your capacity. Um, uh, do not open a number of new accounts to increase capacity. You know, um, we talked about, you know, uh, you, you, the, the, the concept of 
um, having more limits in relation to lower balances, but you don't want to go hog wild and say, all right, I'm going to you know, open a credit card anywhere and everywhere. And they, they look at that as a, a, the credit scoring models look at that as, oh, wait a minute, they've never, they haven't applied for credit in the past and all of a sudden they've applied for 10 different places or whatever, then it's going to, then it's going to pull down your credit score in the short run. Um, slow down on opening new accounts. That's going to help your, um, improve your credit score. Acquire a solid history with years of experience. You know, it's called credit history for a reason. It's a history. It's developed over time. And unfortunately, you know, most 18 and 19 year olds that I've dealt with, they don't understand the history portion of that. You know, it, it, it's, it's developed over time. And so, um, it, and it, you know, it, it's something that you don't get overnight and you, you know, and it, it, it takes time to develop it. And so, um, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a time factor there. Um, and then the other thing that you can do to actually improve your credit score is removing revolving, removing revolving debt into t installment debt. So say that um, you have like credit card balances that, um, that are maxed out at the limits, then if you were to, to be able to, you know, you might not be able to pay those balances off right now, but if you were to move those from revolving credit into some type of installment loan, then it's going to positively impact your credit score because it's going to, one, paying those balances off is going to increase your capacity because you've reduced um, the balances on those credit lines and it increased your capacity, which is 30% of your credit report. Um, now, again, it's you got to take a long run and a short run. The short run is it could negatively impact your credit score immediately because you've opened a new account, you had an inquiry, um, you've got a, a now a, a, a new loan with a balance that's at, at the full the original amount. But in the long run, it's going to positively impact your credit score because that it's installment loan versus revolving and that you have much more capacity at that point. Now the, the key factor there is you don't want to run up those revolving balances again because then that'll just continue to pull down that credit score. Next please. So where do I start? Um, the FACT Act was actually um, uh, one of the things that the government has done right. You know the FACT Act um, that in, in 2003 to the, it was an amendment to the Fair Credit Reporting Act but that entitles every one of us to a free credit report every 12 months. And there are three major credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. And all three of those are required to provide you a credit report free of charge, no fee, can't charge you for it if they want to, they can't, um, they can't slip a fee in, whatever, free of charge every 12 months. Um, there's a website that was provided, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's actually supported by all three of those major bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, all support this one website, annualcreditreport.com. You can go there anytime, request your credit report. They'll ask you for some personal information. They'll ask you for your name, social security number, date of birth, all that kind of stuff that you have to go in and put that in. But you can get a free copy of your credit report. Now that credit report does not include your credit score. It's just a, the report itself. So it includes all the information. So that was where the question earlier was, um, how do I know what all accounts or what all trade lines are on my credit report? This is how you know. You can get a free copy of your credit report. And again, we're going to, um, you know, if, you, if, if you're like, we'll provide you with, you know, go over that credit report with you now and we can show you those accounts. And uh, in addition to that, we'll pull the score. So we'll see that as well. Um, but the credit report you get on here doesn't have a score. Now, they will try and sell you a score. You can elect to buy it or not. You know, I think, it, you know, you leave like nine or nine to 20 bucks or something like that for a score, something that, that, that they charge you. Um, so you can elect to buy your score from them, but there's so many different scoring models, it's hard to compare apples to apples from one vendor to another and the different types of scoring models now. Um, but, but they have to provide you the credit report free of charge. But you know, next slide, please. Um, beware of imitations because they can charge you for a credit report. I mean, you've all seen the, 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 the commercials online advertising free credit report or, you know, and each one of these bureaus have their, their, their own separate way to promote their free credit score and most of them to have you type, sign up to some type of monitoring service like a credit monitoring service that you that you have to sign up for with it as well you don't have to do that you know so a lot of people think oh well, i've got to do that to get the credit score no you don't you can get the free credit if you go to annualcreditreport.com you can get the free credit report none of the monitoring none of the you don't have to pay for the score if you don't want to and it's up to you now what we advise people to do you've got three different vendors that you can um that you can pull from every 12 months. So what we'll advise people to do is just use one this month and then wait four months and then, um, and then um, pull one from another vendor and that way you can kind of monitor your own credit over time. And then every four months you're pulling a, another one and when it rolls back around to the, um, 
to the, the, the third vendor, you're back to the new year, so you can get the next free copy. So you have to go wait a little bit more than four months for it to work out, but it, it's a good way to just monitor your own credit, you know, and, and, and free of charge. Next, please. Um, what if there are errors in my credit score? Um, credit reporting agencies must investigate any errors that are reported to them within 30 days. You can dispute any errors on your credit reports, and this gives you information on there. But when you get a, um, when you go to the website and put in your information, get your credit report, man, I would just go through it and with a fine tooth comb and say, hey, this is right, this is wrong, this is I, I didn't have this account, this wasn't mine, this was my dad's. You know, um, good example. Again, I'm a Tom, I'm a junior, I'm Tom Painter Jr. And um, I was, you know, I, I'll, I'll confess how old I am today. Um, I was born in 1972. There is a trade line on my on my um, on my credit file today that was opened in 1972. Um, and obviously, I didn't open it, you know, because I was, uh, you know, very young at the time and uh, not applying for credit. But it was it's my dad's account. But it was opened in 1972. And it had it's had perfect payment history on it since then, so I don't bother telling them about it because it actually helps my credit score. So you know, there, there at times you know misinformation can help you, um, and I hope Echo, no one from Equifax or TransUnion is watching this. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but at times misinformation can help you, um, but other times you would want, you'd want to look on that and say, hey, no, no, that's not mine. That's you know that was my dad's or that was my brother's or whatever. And, the, and it can, it can it, you know, it negatively impact your credit score. So you want to go through it with a fine tooth comb once you get the copy of the credit report. Next, please. Yes. Um, so again, um, whether you're earning $7 an hour or $700,000 a year, it's very important to protect your score. And that was given by Frank Adignet, Adignale. He was actually um, the, the man that was that, um, that movie was, uh, I think it was Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio was... Um, Catch me if you can, yeah. Um, so, you know, he, he, he recognized the importance of credit scores, and I think we all do. You wouldn't be here if you didn't recognize the importance of your credit score and your credit report. Um, so with that, we want to open the floor to questions. Are there any questions that you might have as a group that you want to? And then if, if not, then we certainly want to uh, get you with someone that will be able to go over your credit report, go over your credit score, and answer any personal questions that you might have with, with your um, credit score. And Facebook, we want to take the time now to say thank you for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, um, then please contact us at Members First Credit Union. Any questions that you might have? All right, thank you so much. Appreciate your attention. And uh, uh, we'll, at that point, we'll, just, we'll be happy to get you with, um, with someone to help you individually. Thank you. Thank you.